TV, your husband lifestyle channel. Today on How TV. My favorite food is rice. I like it because it's easy to cook and then it's, it's delicious and it's very light as well. I could do it six times a day because it's something I like very much. So I th I'd say rice, yeah. Um, my favorite dish I'd say would be rice. You know, I love eating rice a lot. Like um, I can eat it morning, afternoon, night. Like. I love beans. It's proteinous. So I like something proteinous. Anything Asian goes for me. It's fine. My favorite food is pounded yam. My favorite food is um, eba with a goosey soup, spiced with um, a jayinyo, and then uh, with a kind of malt beside it. I, I like the more as new sauce. Favorite food is the jam with um, okra. I don't exactly have a favorite food. I take an eating as long as it's good food. Well, my friends will say it's <laughs> bread and beans, but I would say it's um, Chinese, Chinese cuisine. Any food that's from a Chinese um, restaurant. My favorite food is uh, Amala. <laughs> I'm there for you. I like a couple of things. I have like um, sessions where I like a particular food and then I get tired of it. So sometimes I like shawarma, I like pizza, I like pounded yam, tapioca, different things. It used to be Amala and Abla. You know, I'm a typical Yoruba man. Basmati rice, curry soup, then anything Indian as well, it's fine. When you have a mala, the black one, hot and the beg. When we say ama, a, a bula, that's a combination of a wedu and the beg gris. The wedu is uh, made from the wedu leaves and uh, the beg gris is made from the beans. You know? And you know, when you mix everything together, and then, not that you put it separately, not that you put amala separate and abula separate, no. You put amala, one plate, put the begri and we do same plate, and then hot. I like, you know, you know <laughs> there's something sensational about this thing, hot thing, and it's always very interesting for me. Amala is not the kind of food you, you get to eat all the time, so each time I have the opportunity of eating, it's always a memorable kind of <laughs> event for me. Um, because um, it gives that, uh, that ideology of a task yet to be finished. And when you finish eating, you know you have done a very good job. So, uh, Alhamdulillah, you know, when I say things like uh, sometimes tea and, uh, you know, Sometimes you take date and some other things like that, you know, depending on, inshallah, the situation.
Lifestyle TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. Do you know who this is? Of course not. It's my uncle. And do you know who this is? Neither do I. I work for the Human Resources Department at a local engineering firm. I also just applied for another job at a far more prestigious agency. In that interview, I was pretty confident I'd get the job. I knew exactly how this process worked since I'm usually on the other side of the table interviewing candidates just like myself at my current firm. The interviewers told me that I and one other individual were the strongest candidates. I'm pretty sure I'll beat them out. Not only because I killed the interview, but because I also have my ways. Every night before I sleep, I try to read a few pages from the biography of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I've always found his life fascinating. In fact, before I got busy with work, I used to attend weekly classes about his life and used to feel like it was as if he was in front of me teaching me how to live. Even if Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad, stole, I would punish him. Fear Allah and do justice amongst your children. Seven people will be shaded by Allah. The first of them, a just rule. Now I remember him. He was the guy that applied for a job at my firm last year. I knew he was qualified. I knew I should have picked him. But I overlooked him and instead chose one of my friends from high school. Come to think about it, I interviewed them both the same day. My friend was clearly less qualified, but I nominated him to the executive committee and he was employed. This number is no longer in service. How am I supposed to reach this guy? I hope he still has the same address. Oh Allah, help me find him. Oh Allah, I beg you to forgive me for being unfair. I've never realized how difficult this would be until I was in a similar position, waiting to hear back. He didn't remember me at first, but eventually I refreshed his memory. I begged for his forgiveness and told him that the job was once again vacant. And if he reapplied, I would be sure to nominate him to the committee with the highest of recommendations. After a moment of silence, he said, you know, I have to ask, why now? What suddenly awaked your conscience? Muhammad, the prophet of God. We need to read about his life and challenge our own vices with his principles, to read about his sense of justice, to read about how when Usama bin Zayd came to intercede on behalf of a powerful woman, he responded by saying that even if his own beloved daughter Fatima stole, he would treat her no different. We have to read about his call to establish justice, be it against our own family members and even against ourselves at times. His call to uphold justice and equality for all of the children of Adam. All of you are from Adam and Adam was from dirt. There is no difference between one who is white and one who is black, except in piety. As for that new job that I had applied for that I was sure I would get because I had my ways, particularly my uncle being the manager of that company who already guaranteed me the job. He told me to meet him at Asr prayer that day.
I was shocked, disappointed, and staggered. He chose the other candidate because he said he was more qualified. He explained to me how difficult it was for him to overlook me even though I was his own nephew, but he felt he had to be fair. As disappointed as I was, I told him I was proud of him. And I was. Our Prophet taught us that everyone should have their rights and that everyone should be given a fair opportunity to succeed in this life and the hereafter. Rasulullah, you never wronged anyone or allowed anyone to be wronged in your presence. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an adilla aw udal aw azilla aw uzal aw adlima aw udlam أو أجهل أو يجهل علي Hal TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. In a time of darkness and green, it is your light that we need. You came to teach us how to live, Muhammad, Ya Rasulullah. You were so caring and kind. Your soul was full of love. The best of mankind, Muhammad, Khairu was brighter than the sun your beauty equal by none you are Allah's chosen one Muhammad khayru The 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm Abla Akin from Al TV and I'm here live at Lekki Central Mosque after Mufti Meng's lecture. You can see the amount of people who are trooping in from different parts of Lagos just to listen to Mufti Meng. And we are asking them questions. What did you gain from Mufti Meng's lecture? Actually, I came in a little bit late, but from the things I heard and then from the fact that I've heard a couple of his lectures before, he's a great lecturer. He's someone that you know, even if you, if you join in five minutes, you will gain a couple of things. And the major thing I took away from here today is how you can actually be a better Muslim in every way. How people, people that are not even Muslims need to learn from you and realize that, okay, these are things I, t I could take out from this Muslim person to be a better person. I mean, the Prophet was had people that were not Muslims and it was best to them. So I think one of the things we need to do as a Muslim of this, well, I say of this century, of this era, is that we need to realize that because we're Muslims, because some people are not Muslims, they are not, we're not better off than them. So we should in every way try to you know, improve in our attitude and I'm sure people will emulate from us. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I would like to just remind myself constantly of what he said today concerning this uh, seeking for knowledge. So, and I'll take that as part and parcel of me. I'm going to take it along with me that it is always essential in life to seek for knowledge. If we are to contribute to what is happening in the world, at least we need certain amounts of knowledge to be able to contribute effectively. Um, just like um, Al Haji um, Mufti said, he said you need to have a link with your maker. Yeah, that really goes along with you. As a Muslim, you have to have a link with your maker. Know your responsibility as a Muslim. Reach out to your other ones. Pass information. Let them know what Islam truly is. And that is it. Um, for me personally, I actually came downstairs right as I was finishing to ask a question. And that question would have been that women, what is our role really in the Ummah? Because we've been sold so many stories about why we should just be at home, why we should look after our family. You know this thing about being educated, being out there and doing much more than that has been on the plate. So that's a question I would have loved to ask, ask Mufti Meng, but I didn't get the chance to. The question would be, should Muslim, should the Muslim women be very conservative or do they have the right to go out a little to contribute their own quota to Islam? To the world in general. Um, I'm about to start learning how to memorize the Quran and learn Arabic language, and he really spoke on that. So I think that's the thing I'll say. I'm taking home from the lecture. Yes. Come on, Afi is very soon. Amen. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> okay, for me, I think I I learned that you should be kind to everybody, regardless of whether they are Muslims or not. And then it is true our actions that people see the beauty of Islam, and then they may decide to become Muslim. So I'll try to practice that more. So you will try to ensure that you portray the beauty of Islam to anybody you meet, Muslims and non-Muslims? Um, I'm learning that um, I should be patient with my prayers. Um, if, for instance, I've been praying for something and I'm not getting it, that doesn't mean um, Allah is not answering my prayers. I should be patient, fast more, be steadfast, in a way. Thank you very much. What of you? Um, like she said, be patient and also seek for more knowledge and try to be a better Muslim every day. Um, having heard uh, Mufti Meng's uh, lectures in the past and coming from South Africa myself, um, the one thing that uh, I will take away is his I imploring uh, the gathering to take up uh, Arabic and to understand the Quran, understand what, we, uh, what the message of the Quran is and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to, uh, to say to us in the Quran and inshallah that will be our, our, our salvation and, and be our success in this world and in the year after. Uh, one thing I think I'm taking home and I actually wrote it down is that um, while you're striving to make Jannah you also need to make the world and you need to make a living for yourself. You need to be able to make money just like he said and uh, be able to pay your zakah and do so much sadaqah as much as you can and help the Muslim Ummah. And you, cannot, you can't do that if you don't make money here in, in dunya. Because some people are like, uh, you don't need to make dunya, you don't need to even work, just serve Allah, you know. Um, I think I, I, I want to go with what he said and I agree with him. To balance everything. Thank you. You please. Um, the fact that we've been born as Muslims does not entitle us to Al-Jannah. 
and in fact as Muslims we have more responsibility to strive harder for our gender than those other, um, other people who were not born into Islam and so we must take the pillars of faith um, more seriously and work harder um, upon the path of Islam. That I need to be better and improve on myself every day inshallah. Improve yourself every day, self-improvement. I think it's just the general theme of tolerance between Muslims and non-Muslims. We should learn to respect each other and learn to live in harmony. So we should tolerate them, we should not push them away, or we should draw them closer to ourselves. Well, basically it's that knowledge is very important and then um, the whole concept of some people trying to sabotage Islam, we should really fight against it with our own actions rather than just say, okay, I'm following Islam. You really don't know anything about Islam. You're just following blindly and all that. What you're learning, or what you're trying to do, you have to put into back into the society um, to be like in the name of Allah. You don't have to keep the knowledge to yourself. You have to teach others and put that impact back into the society. I'm taking on the fact that we should respect everyone and treat everyone equally, and we shouldn't feel more special than the other person because that's, Islam is against that and we should always reduce ourselves to the most humble level. Well, he said that the reason why um, the, um, the picture of the Prophet Muhammad wasalam, was drawn was because people claim that they follow, they claim that they follow Muhammad wasalam, but they don't follow him. They just, they just claim to follow him but they don't really follow him. But that's why the disbelievers are just trying to disgrace them in any way they can find. And uh, I remember about uh, one of the hadith that he quoted, which was the last one, that he said the best of, if you want to know they are very, they are one of the best of mankind, is that uh, you are very beneficial to the whole mankind, like very beneficial. Um, <laughs> what's that? knowledge, like how to impact knowledge on other people. Once you know it, you should always try to um, impact it on others because we are Muslims and I think the fact that the Western education is also very important so we should strive to excel at it so we can help the Ummah with it. Even as, even as well as you want to learn more about Islam, you should also learn about the Western education so it can be a balanced community. Actually, um, when I started my Islam, I was just a regular Muslim go to mocks on Fridays, pray a five-day prayer, read the Quran, that's all. When I started listening to him, he, he's a motivational speaker, you understand? I really learned a lot from him. If I, all his topic, I've you know, learned a lot from it. So when I saw today's topic within knowledge, which I have not had the time to come across any of his um, lecture, which has to be knowledge. So I tried my best to be here, at least to add that one to my, to my CV. Concerning him. Hal TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Hafiz Oyetoro, popularly known as Saka. You are on to Al TV. Keep watching Al TV. Allah bless you as you do so. Masalam. Join us again tomorrow for more. The Holy Quran has 114 surahs. You cannot say ideally that this is my favorite surah. 
all of the 114 surahs, they are my favorite surahs. Kind of like Fatiha because it's prayer. It's um, something that you can, you know, in public, like when they say, oh, my Muna will come and pray for us. And this thing is something that is a shortcut prayer for every gathering. And, you know, everybody can kind of relate to it. Muslim lifestyle channel.